G'day, Jason the Middle-Aged Gear Junkie here. I recently picked up a Tech 21 Sansamp GT2 Amping Cab Simulator. Now this has been on my bucket list of gear to try for a very long time, which I'll explain later on. But the question is, should I keep or sell? Here's my direct tone. It's almost completely flat. All right, that is just guitar going straight into the sound card. Uh, the only thing on it is a little bit of reverb from the little Behringer digital reverb, so that things don't get too dry. It's on a spring setting. All right, so here is the Sands amp. Now, the setting that I just used was the recommended setting for the Baseman style tweed amplifier. Now, the way this pedal works is we have level and drive, which is normal, low and high, again, which is pretty normal, uh, but it has three dip switches on the front and they all have different parameters. So uh, the one on the right controls what type of amplifier I'm using. At the moment, I've got it set to tweed, which is supposed to be a Fender Bassman style amplifier. I have it set to clean, which even though it says clean, it's not very clean. If I turn the gain up, So even with the gain all the way up, it's just a little bit crunchy, that's all. If I flick it up to the British setting, it's supposed to sound like a Marshall. And if I flick it up to Californian, it's supposed to sound like a Mesa Boogie. In the middle, we have clean, high gain, and hot wide. High gain has a fair bit of gain. Hot wide is crazy gain. And then we have where the mic is positioned. So if imagine we are running one of these amplifiers and we were recording it with a microphone, do we have the mic uh, in the classic position, which is basically pulled back from the amplifier uh, in the room. Then we have the middle setting, which is uh, center. So having it close mic'd right in the middle, uh, which is probably the brightest setting. And then we have off axis, which means that the microphone is off to the side. If I was to check out the other two mod settings uh, on the same amplifier with the same mic position, uh, this is what it would sound like. So this is clean. <laughs> That's high gain and hot wide. Yeah, it really does have an amp like quality to it. Let's uh, have a look at the mic position. Yeah, so off, off axis there is a little bit darker. Yeah, okay, so basically if you want a mid-range focus, put it in the classic position. If you want uh, a bit more sort of full range sound, uh, especially in the top ends, put it into the center. And off axis, uh, we lose a bit of that top end. I'm imagining that's gonna sound better with heavy uh, um, settings. So I might take a moment to explain how the EQ works. Now, when you set it between the arrows, uh, it's in a neutral position. And when you start to turn it up from that point, you are now adding top end or low ends. Uh, 
Uh, but if you start to wind it down from there, you're actually winding out high or low. I noticed that in the manual that all the recommended settings that it had basically recommended that you put the EQ at neutral. So probably the only reason you would play around with those is to suit the guitar that you're playing. So if you're playing something with really thin pickups like say this guitar does on the, on the bridge, it might need a bit extra bass. <laughs> I'd probably agree and say that it sounds best in the middle position. So I've just changed guitars to my Seymour Duncan loaded chord because the next two modes are a little bit higher gain and uh, we need something that's gonna handle that. So I've switched to the British mode. Uh, the recommended setting is to have all the dip switches in the middle. So center miking, uh, high gain mod and uh, British. I've got the EQ set at neutral as well. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it does sound a bit like a, uh, a JCM 900. sounds pretty good. Really feels at home at uh, high gain settings. This is the recommended setting for Boogie. Now I'm going to demonstrate one preset from each amp that was recommended in the manual. Thank <laughs> you. 
So the Tech 21 Sansamp GT2 came out in the probably around about the mid 90s and it was the follow up to the Tech 21 Sansamp pedal which came out in the late 80s. Now it would probably have to go down as probably the first amping cab simulator pedal ever designed. Now the original has gone down as a classic and they're, they're hard to get a hold of and they're quite expensive but they're not the easiest pedal to use unless you really know what you're doing. What they did for the GT2 is they simplified the original Sansamp pedal and they gave you three dip switches instead of about eight. And this gives you different options in terms of what type of amp you want, what gain range you want, and you know the miking situation for the amplifier. So the idea behind a pedal like this is that you can go straight out of it into a mixing desk, either live or in the studio without using an amplifier. Now today, that's nothing new, that's nothing special special but back in the late 80s to mid 90s this was something that was pretty rare. Now as I said at the top uh, this was on my bucket list of things to try because I remember seeing a band I can't remember their name probably about 96 97 and uh, their guitar player I noticed he didn't have an amplifier but he had a really cool guitar tone and I went up to the stage after the gig and I picked over and had a look at his pedal board and he had one of these on there and I've wanted to try them ever since. So out of the three amp settings, you had the Tweed for me, which had the most character to it and probably sounded the most amp-like out of the three. Uh, it is also probably the most generic in terms of what you can do with it. You can play sort of bluesy stuff, rock, country, all sorts of stuff with that. Whereas I think that the other two settings, the British and the California sounds, I think they're more geared towards your hard rock and heavy metal. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it just I just think they're a little bit more limited in what you can do with them. I didn't think there was a huge amount of difference between the British and California settings, uh, other than that the, the California one had a fair bit more bass. I did find that those two settings just, they just were a little bit sterile to play. They, you know, they, they sounded pretty good, but they weren't inspiring. So in today's market, I think that this pedal has been superseded. Now, there's a lot of good digital modeling um, amp and cab simulators out there that give you things like presets and you can change between them on the fly. Whereas this, if you wanted to change between settings, you would have to physically get down and remember your settings and set it up. So that's probably one of the drawbacks. You pretty much have to set and forget it. One of the other uses for it, the manual says that it can be used in the effects loop of your amplifier, but it recommends that you do not put it through the front of your amplifier because the uh, cam simulation on it will affect your EQ quite badly. So you're better off uh, putting it through your effects loop or just going direct and using this. Now, if you've got like a lead tone or something set up using this and that's been your tone for years, well, you know, I totally understand still using something like this. But I think today there's just so much else out there that um, it's somewhat redundant. So if you think I should keep or sell this pedal, please leave a comment below and please tell me about any experiences, good or bad, that you've had with this pedal. Uh, you know, in either case, for me, it was fun just to be able to uh, get my hands on it and try it after all his years of, of wanting to. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Remember, you can go to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store. I've put the links down in the description below. I've got some uh, more merchandise there available. And uh, you can also join the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page. The link is also in the description. Other than that, my name is Jason. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.